Hello there and welcome to Golf Lovers United, where we discuss golf the fair way. Coming up this week, we have the Danish domination of the DP World Tour, the PGA Tour, and the first French winner on the PGA Tour for 117 years. But is it in a pretty strong field? Is it in a slightly weakened field? Let's discuss that and all manner of things in the way that we are so uniquely doing the fairest possible way we're also going to discuss of course the return of the live golf season kicking off this weekend in maya Coba. but before we do that i have to tell you that we are very grateful to all of our supporters over on our glu gc fan zone we've got new people coming through all of the time we've got a shout out to a brand new one coming next week that is landing imminently so look out for that if you also want the shout out if you want to get early access if you want some meetup invitations you can get involved at glugc.com slash support and you can listen to the show in all of your favorite podcast apps or indeed over on youtube so that leaves me with just one more order of business before we dive in to the high quality analysis high quality banter and the high quality two out of three hats makes a serious fashion trend so i've got to do this i've got to bring them on otherwise it's going to be the best show we've done I'll bring him on anyway. It's going to be, of course, Mr. Pro Golf Critic and Mr. Golf Lover UK. Jay and Ben, welcome team. Welcome to your daily golf. No, no, sorry. That's, that's, that's the other thing. That's my uh, oh, 90 seconds. Oh, not second. that. I'm sick of seeing your face, mate. Honestly, it's, it's like when you drive past a bus and like, there's a movie, you know, and you see the same bus every like 20 to the hour, every hour. I'm like, Ben's back, Ben's back, Ben's back. You sound like, like a movie star. Content. Of course you are with those cheekbones, mate. Are you kidding? You've got the, the oh, young Zac Efron look. This is the one thing my wife's really happy about Lucas Herbert coming to live because Lucas Herbert and I have both got one big sticky out ear. So the, the <laughs> one, uh, Lucas Herbert's got even more than I have, but both of us have got one ear which just just gets itself out there, does a little bit more than it needs to do. So yeah, Liz was saying, she was showing Liz the, 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 the new, new signings and she's like, that guy's got an ear like you. I was like, yes, he does. Good looking bloke. <laughs> I love that that's probably like the first thing as well that your wife picked up on. None of the other stuff. It's just always no. that. I've never noticed that before. It's, I, if you'd not mentioned that, right. I still Honestly, can't even see it. Go, go look at him. <clears throat> Type in Lucas Herbert now while we're chatting. Got no, one we know big Lucas Herbert. Here. We know yeah, Lucas I'm Herbert. Thinking of we, you. I'm we never noticed it with, with you. <laughs> I'm just oh, staring yeah, yeah, at you now. Yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Yeah, that's never well, called the daily golf I, 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 I turn, I turn like that, look, to neutralise them, to make them look the same. I can't go straight on. Man, you are a absolute Christopher Nolan. I can see him in the window behind you, just abseiling down that building behind you to try and get to you for some tips. Because that is that is some pro, mate. That is some pro. I never noticed. Unbelievable. Well, Jay, what deformities do you have? I think that's like one of the rules of hollywood is never to tell people what your deformities are but uh luckily as far as i um i know as far as what mrs pro golf critic tells me uh i'm pretty much in proportion um so that's i think that's a good thing um easy tiger you know, so this is a kid show <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah that, you seem in proportion let's... jay <laughs> yeah let's let's uh yeah let's let's move on but yeah let's let's talk about the golf but um no, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> it's been an exciting week. There's been a lot going on. Um, most a lot of merger updates. There's a lot of stuff going on with Live. A lot of stuff going on with the PJ Tour. Um, a lot more haters out there per usual, and that's kind of look as this show con continues to go up and um, and our profiles continue to uh, sort of increase and our footprint increases in the golf world, like. I mean, haters kind of come along with it, so you know it's all good. Uh, we're uh, prepared for it, like like I tell people all <laughs> all the time. No one's better prepared to handle the haters than me. And that'll teach them. That'll <laughs> teach them. No, it is funny. It's always interesting to see it on on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, so we'll see what comments we get this week. Like I said, if you want to get involved, if you do want to comment, if you want to let us know what you think, love it, hate it, love us. Haters, let us know. It's better than not letting us know, all right? Because remember, it's always better to be fair. So you can do that on YouTube or in your podcast app of choice. Now, 
Before we get to the live stuff, which I know you're going to be itching to talk about, I want to spend a little bit of time on the DP World Tour, jump over to the PGA Tour. Um, the DP World Tour, we had um, uh, Thomas Olison, um, who'd, who'd won. And, and, and it, was, it was, you know, I actually quite enjoyed this event. I actually, I actually enjoyed the event. I thought it was, I actually thought it was pretty nice. It was a pretty good event. Um, Hoygaard was, was in there, was in the mix, um, like he was over the, uh, over the, the, the Rasmus Hoygaard, not the Nikolai, uh, in the mix as well. It was a nice little event, but then I'm a little bit biased because it's on at like 10 a.m. for me in the UK, so I, I sort of enjoy it. Um, so Ben, did you watch much of this? I, I look, did I watch much of it? When did I watch some of it? I watched some of it. Um, I've got plenty going on at the minute, which is taking up my weekends, as you two know. But what I did notice was, and I did like the event, and I do like, I do like that course, Razal Kuraiki, Razal Crimea. Can't remember. Sorry, but he, he won at a canter as well. He won by six or seven, which was which was really good. But I look, I looked down the field. Let me get the field up. Speaking of the field, sorry to jump in. I don't, I don't know why I said Thomas. I've been saying Torborn Olsen yeah. all day, and I was like talking to someone <laughs> called Thomas at work earlier. So now everyone's called Thomas. So thank just, you. Just I'm call him sorry, Thunder Bear. Torbjorn. Just call him Thunder Bear. That's that's all right. I can do best, that. Best which is it. it's a better Twitter handle as well, isn't it? <laughs> the, the, thing, yeah. the thing I'm noticing about it, and this is. So obviously, we're supporters of Live. I'm a supporter of PJ Tour. I know Jay isn't, but what's happened is we've now we've got the Live Tour. What we do have is diluted fields across everything in names, so we can look at the PJ Tour event, the DP World Tour event. There are fewer stars because we know the DP World Tour took ten players out of the out of the European Tour, and we know that Live have taken forty five, fifty players out of, out of the two. So we are having thinner fields per se, which means you're going to get different winners and different looks down those fields. And I think that's something we're going to have to get used to. So you look at players in the list and it's not exactly a who's who. Don't get me wrong. Like Sebastian Soderberg is a good golfer. Richard Mansell's a good golfer. There's loads of great golfers in there. But there's also some players in there that haven't had the best of the last two, three years and now getting opportunities, which is why I think what will be really interesting is getting that major access to get all those best players together. And I don't dislike what's going on with that DP World Tour. I think the events are good fun. I think it's got some fantastic players on there. Does it have the pop name-wise? That's one of the questions. It won't stop me watching it. It won't stop you watching it, Mark. But Jay... I do think it probably does stop you watching it a little bit because you've got to get up early and change your schedule. And as much as you love golf, if you look at Thiorborn Olsen, Rasmus Hoygaard, Frederick Lacroix, Maximilian Kiefer, Keita Nakamichima, Yannick hmm. Paul, Callum Schwinkin, Brandon Stone, Sebastian Soderberg, Rich Mansell, Josh Green, uh, Grenville Wood, Angel Hidalgo makes it your top 10. Yeah. I'm not sure that gets everyone out of bed. Now, I love it, no. and I love the DP World Tour, and I'll go watch it. And I'm looking forward to going to the Betfred, Betfred, Betfred Masters at, at the um, Belfry. I'm looking forward to all of that. But I'm a golf nerd. Yeah. I don't know if that gets others going. Is that fair? Yeah, I think there's a couple things that people need to keep in mind. Like uh, One of the things that um, I mentioned about the... Uh, feel the Tory Pines and sort of deals with the uh, DP World Tour as well is that uh, these tournaments are not just about the actual players playing in it. It's also about the quality of the course. Uh, you know, look, um, I went on and on about um, Emirates last week. Like, I love Emirates Golf Course. Like, it's just something that, like, I've been, I've been watching now for a long time. It's one of those courses that every time I see it, I'm like, man, I really want to play that course. That's what gets me out of <laughs> out of bed that's like one of the sort of the uh very very uh the the baseline thing that sort of get gets me out um out of bed to watch a a golf tournament then um on top of that you also have the quality of the field and the uh players that are that are in it uh that's the thing that i keep telling people about the pj tour is that like it uh you can have a weaker field like it's totally fine like um i um enjoy the end of the farmer's Ember the uh, farmers open, open at uh, Torrey Pines. It, it was totally fine. Uh, my biggest problem with these tours, and I will <laughs> say this un until it stops, the fact that they continue to just flat out ignore the, the players that went to live, 
uh, the the PJ Tour specifically just continues to whitewash their their record books of like all players that that went over uh, to live golf. Uh, that's the thing that really makes me mad, and things that, it makes me like, uh, you know, they always want to pretend like, oh yeah, this is like the best field, uh, you know, in the world, and it's like it's not. Like you guys need to. I just want everybody to face reality at this point because it's something that just like really makes me mad. Is that when something is marketed as something that it's not the PJ tour is being marketed right now. as something that it's not the DP world tour, the same thing. Like there needs to be some sort of recognition like, Oh, you know, uh, we, we could have Sergio, we could have Ian Polder. We could have Lee Westwood. We could have all these guys, Henrik Stenson in our field. Uh, but we're, we're actively choosing to exclude these guys. And that's something that like they completely ignore. And it's something that lessens every single event. Certain events get lessened to the point where I don't care about it. Uh, certain events, their you know stature has been lessened, uh, and that's one of the things that like I want everybody to keep in mind as we move forward is that this is something that they have to fix uh, because I know it's impacted my watching. I know it's starting to impact other people too. Um, and as much as they could pretend like, oh, we've got all this talent, like. You know, oh, it's so cool that an amateur won on the PJ Tour last week. Oh, it's really cool that, that we have a Frenchman winning on the PJ Tour. It's also like, I mean, this is, <laughs> it's not a coincidence when you dilute the, the fields to a cert, certain extent, you have new things happen. Um, and the PJ Tour and the DP World Tour are masters at spinning this stuff. Um, and it's, like I said, the tournaments themselves are totally fine. Um, I've been following uh, Torbjorn Olsen for a long time because he's been a Nike guy. I've been a Nike guy, too. I followed his career for a long time. I was really glad to see him get get back um, on top last year. Uh, he's uh, winning again now, which is great because uh, he definitely had some personal challenges in there. That uh, If you, you look in the, <laughs> the news the last couple of years, it's been some interesting stuff. you know. But I think that that's some, something that... Uh, uh, you know, it <laughs> it just impacts my viewing of these uh, events. So there's going to be plenty of tournaments that I still watch on the European Tour, the uh, courses that I really like. There's going to be plenty of events on the PJ Tour. Uh, like, I'm going to watch Pebble Beach this this week. I'm actually trying to make, make it down there uh, for at least one day. Um, and, yeah, so, I mean, those tournaments are what they are. I just want them to be more honest about it. I think to, to, to pick up that and actually roll it out in a fair way, let's go down that route. I think, I, I think all, th let's look at the three major tours that we discuss here. Liv, let's discuss the DP and the PGA Tour. All the fields are weaker. Liv's weak. The DP World Tour is weak. PGA Tour is weak because no one has all of the best players. That's the, the notion around all of the, all of the uh, the majors and 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 in the importance of of getting a deal done. That's the point of it. That no one can say they've got all of the best players. Liv's got some of the best players, but Charles Swartzel won the in inaugural championship. He'd not won since 2016. You know, yeah. what, if we didn't say, oh, God. he's not won since 2016. He's won over at Lib because the field's a bit weak. But we're saying that about an amateur. We're saying it about a French yeah. person. So I think we. I yeah. just think that balance is quite important. It's not to disparage Liv. No. It's not to disparage the PGA Tour. I think the fractious nature has reached yeah. such a point that all yeah. ships have sunk. And I th now I think, it's I think, to yeah, emerge well, and, and the, lift. The, the no? cream, there's less cream. There's less cream across. <clears throat> Let's say you've got 25 world-class players that are consistently in the top 30 because people do come up and people do drop down. And I'm ignoring the OWGR, but let's say you've got 25 players that are consistently in the top, say, 35. Those 25 players can now split. Arguably, none, none are on the DP World Tour. And you can argue about just under 50% are on Live and just over 50% on the PGA Tour of that top 25, 30. So as you say, there's less cream to be knocked around. But I think the problem is, and maybe I'm not saying Jay wasn't saying it in the right way, is that outside of the PGA Tour, we'll go on it later, the PGA Tour elevated events are going to be great. They're going to have fantastic fields, really strong fields, name recognition from one through 60 with sort of 10 newer names coming through, right? 
that is not what you get in the other, in the other PGA Tour events. So I think, and and while I know a lot of people get angry with Liv, and I understand, and one of the things I see, and that, while I don't agree with it, I don't agree with it at all, is a point I understand, which is I hate what's happened with the dilution of golf. I just want all the best players. Now, I get that. I don't agree with it because I believe it's everyone's right to go and chase what they want and do what they want and build what they want. That's the free market. But I do hear and understand that if you were watching, if you were watching the PGA Tour on, sat, on, on Wednesday through Saturday, that top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, outside of Chauffle and Fino, is not really a big top eleven, big top twelve, is it? Yeah. And I think that's yeah. what has happened. Because if you, if you had the PGA Tour and Liv had never existed, <coughs> excuse me, five or six other Liv players on Liv would have been in that event. It would have been much more stellar. This, that, and the other. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's definitely part that. of it. I, I, yeah. It is. It's huge. And I think just to throw into the, again, just devil's advocate in this out, if the live leaderboard looks like Bryson, DJ, Patrick Reed, Pat Perez, Charles Watzel, you know, it's it's the same net result. It's the same, it's the same mix. And and I think that again, it is what it is. Fracture has caused all ships to sink a little bit in regards to the field strength. But I genuinely think at the end of it, you know, the continent's pushing together, you build a mountain and you just, you, you, you create something far, far stronger off, in my view, off the back of that, because people are happier playing those that made the choices and made the choices and they're yeah. happier. So I, it's, it's almost that three or four years of pain in my view. Um, oh, for that sure. was for sure. to flip it yeah, around. There... I was bored of PGA tour anyway, every Sunday night, yeah. I was like, I'm not going to turn it on and watch. I love the certain tournaments, but if it's just a, if it's a normal week to quote a normal week, it's going to be the same guys anyway. You yeah, know? that was so going to be my really question. Win. That was going to be my question to you guys. Uh, this event at Tory Pines, like to me, it's a traditional event. Like my dad calls me every time uh, Tory Pines is on TV because I've treated him to play golf there a few times. We we love Tory Pines. Um, it's an important venue for us. It's a uh, it's an important important venue for. Uh, U.S. fans, because it's typically where a Tiger started his year, you know, for 20 years, however, however long it, um, it was. Uh, for you guys um, in the U.K., um, um, uh, has this particular event, like, has it been, like, must-watch TV to you guys over the course of time, or has it just uh, kind of been one of those run-of-the-mill PJ Tour you, events? You've got, you've got to remember that a big thing for Mark and I, and for anyone here in the U.K. and Europe, is that that if that event typically isn't finishing till ten thirty, maybe eleven, because it's West Coast. So I typically, oh, I love golf and I'm a golf nerd. I will watch it on catch up the next day. I'll watch it on the Sky Sports highlights package. So here's what exactly what happened to me. Last week in a hotel, I was away for three nights, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday last week. All three nights, I watched the PGA Tour highlights package from the weekend before because it was West Coast. So in the UK, I don't really think wakes up much to um, the PGA Tour as live viewing unless you haven't got kids or work on a Monday morning. <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? Those are two big things because we're not, you're not finishing until 10, 30, 11, sometimes 11, 30. We, we had one last year where there was a two man or three man playoff. I think it didn't finish like quarter past midnight. Well, mate, I'm up, I'm up with a daughter at 6.15. I can't be justifying watching that when I can watch exactly the same golf, even though I know the result, on highlights at a reasonable time. So I think for the UK, AT&T is probably the first event we start to wake up for because it's got the pro-am status and you've got different names from all over playing in it. I think that's one of the things. Mark, what, what do you feel? I was, I, I agree with all of that sentiment, but I just move it back a week. I was always the farmers um, just because I like Tory. I've got an affinity with San Diego, spent a lot of time there um, and just like La Jolla. And it, it's it's one of those places that I just, it, I just really enjoy it. And looking back through my more casual golf viewing years, like you said, Jay, it was very Tiger centric. It was very much the, for me, it always felt like the first proper event. Like I always really enjoyed the wraparound season because you always got like, 
these weird little stories, you know, you always got like the journeyman player that won something and then won again the week after on these, on like the Sony and whatever. And it, they were always quite interesting because there were storylines, but they weren't essential viewing for me. The Farmers for me was like the start of the season. And that's when I switched onto it. And then I'd do that and I'd do the AT&T and then I'd maybe drop off a little bit and, and, and wait until the Florida swing or whatever. But um, yeah, since I've had kids, inevitably I'm the same as you, get up with a little girl at 6, 6.15 a.m. And it's, um, you know, slightly diluted field. Well, very diluted field in comparison to the last 20 years. Kid waking up at 6.15, I'm going to watch you on highlights. Um, and that's just, that's just most of it now. But interesting nonetheless. Um, just I'm conscious of time because I want to get to the, the live stuff, obviously, to chat through that. Um, but the Hoygaard twins had a good week, didn't they? They did well. Yeah, they, they gra- they're grasping chances. And that's one of the things I want to just bring up very quickly about this DP World Tour, 10 best players going across the PGA Tour. Wow, are they taking those chances? Are the European players digging in and having a go? I know not all of the people I'm going to mention have come across in the last batch. But you've got Pavon, you've got Hoygaard, you've got Jaeger, you've got Heyberg, who are all who are all over here playing in that playing in the event, and all all of them in the top nine. Thomas Dietrich, who I love, Thomas Dietrich. I think he's the best three day goal forever. My God, have I lost some money on that bloke on fourth day, mate? He is he is the king of contention and dropping off two over, looking superb two over on on day on day four, but. I think that's so re- excuse me, so good to see, really great to see how many of those players are taking those chances. And I think we will see there's we'll see there's a really good depth of talent in that ten that are coming over and they're gonna fit in quite well in that PGA tour, um, upper echelon of, of players. And I think that's great for the DP World Tour to show the strength they have. I just I am worried. I am worried if I am a sponsor. Look, the Farmers are not sponsoring Tory Pines next year um, in 2026. So come next year and that's it. The farmers are pulled out. Um, did Sony, I can't remember if Sony pulled out or one of the hero events. And we know that RBC are only going to do one of the two events they were doing. We've got people pulling out of the PGA Tour, which is arguably way stronger. How, how on earth are the DP World Tour going to keep sponsors? I just think that's a real big worry for me. I don't, I don't want to, I just don't want to get into it. I'm saying if those top 10 come across and compete, leaving yeah. behind those players, I just, I do really worry about the DP world tour. And I look back at mm-hmm. the, the Malta meeting where they could have done something with live and finance themselves. And I just wonder if we're going to see a real problem, but who knows what the agreement will do. Maybe the agreement will see players get the ability to play on the DP world tour, two or three starts a year. Who knows what, that's that's my worry about the DP World Tour because I love it and God rest his soul, Seve's turning his grave. Look at what's happened to the Euro European Tour and all the work he did there to make it what it was. Yeah, I think that's where things are headed for sure. Um, and um, I'm going to keep this this pretty brief, but um, I got to uh, give a criticism to uh, fans here in America, US uh, US golf fans. A lot of us think that. Uh, the U.S. is the only place where good players come from. And I I have to tell people all the time, there are great people, there are great players throughout the world that you just haven't seen yet, you just haven't heard of yet. Um, and part of it is because they are, you know, on the deep, deeper world tour, they're on the Asian tour, um, and they, they come over to the PJ tour and they start winning. Like, you know, you know, Tom Kim is a perfect example. Like, Tom Kim... Started out on the Asian tour, played really well. He played his way up. He, he played in some European tour events, and then all of a sudden he's winning on the PJ Tour, and the PJ Tour is making him out to be this like a great superstar in golf. And it's like he wasn't brought up through the U.S. ranks, really. Like he was brought up elsewhere. So there's a lot of the, these players. The Hoy Guards are certainly up there with players that are not homegrown talent here in the United States. That now we have these global doors starting to um, open up. Um, it's something that I want all American fans to realize that, oh, you start looking at PGA Tour leaderboards, they're going to start looking like European Tour leaderboards pretty sure, pretty soon because a lot of these guys can play. Uh, they play well on very particular courses. I think Torrey Pines is certainly one where a lot of the Europe European guys uh, sort of thrived on. Like I was look, looking at the top 10, like, it really does kind of look look like a European tour leaderboard. So 
Um, I think that people need to have an appreciation for uh, golfers everywhere, you know, and I think that uh, the Europe, European tour, uh, it's definitely lost its luster over, over the last couple of years. Um, however, there's still a ton of players over there that can play golf and they're really, really good. We'll see what comes of that one. And I, I think it just goes to highlight, like I said earlier on, just fracturing things whether it's it doesn't matter the field that you're in never really works so well it, there's always a difficult time but when they come back together i think that everything will be a lot stronger for it which brings us to of course live my Acoba kicks off this week we've got uh, potentially some john ram team news landing later this week and it's been reported uh that one mr terrell hatton has indeed made the jump to live golf uh mm -hmm. with an improved offer uh so ben hitters what's been going on mate what what are you looking forward to at my but what's the situation with the teams like where is live golf as we stand right now i oh, these things inflame people but live have very strategically not just picked up a lot of good golfers they've also picked up a lot of the big personalities and i think that's going so under the radar tyrell hatton had 60 million reasons to go to live and those 60 million reasons are something that should never, ever be criticized. Every man, woman has the right to provide for their family, to set for their family and put wheels in motion to provide for those around them. I've said it before. I'll say it again and I'll defend it. The line that Chris Carter once said, take my money out of your mouth. It is your right to earn your money as long as it's legal and you're not hurting other people. Just earn your money. So, and no one should criticize them for that. I think Till Hatton will be a fantastic addition to live just because A, him and John Rahm are very good friends. Look at the relationship they forged in the Ryder Cup. It's absolutely superb. They're good mates. They get on really well. But also, Tyrrell's a personality and Liv loves a personality. Now, I'm, I'm going to be going to a couple of live events this year and I cannot wait to see him. I can't wait to try and get him on the podcast or get some sound bites or do something with him. He's a fantastic character to have involved and i would be amazed if i've got people who dislike live on my twitter you'd be surprised to see um who are replying to yeah this team's going to be so much fun oh god they've got hat and this is going to be so much fun and i think it's actually really really funny how that not funny it's it's great to see how many people are going yeah this is going to be fun they're going to be fun together and i put up a little joke about Liv have just bought 10,000 new microphones due to the ones they got worried about and being melted because these two are going to be hot mic. As far as I'm concerned, strap a mic to their caddies. We know they mic up the tee boxes. Have a few mics around the green. There is no fine on Liv and let those boys go hell for leather. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be interesting. I don't know. Uh, one of the theories that I floated is that uh, the environment of Liv is always going to bring out sort of the the more fun side of these guys. So it's going to be really interesting to see if uh, Terrell Hatton, his, uh, his, uh, the demeanor changes, if he's a little bit more less surly than he usually is. I think that might be part of it. Uh, we'll have to see how that all plays out. Um, I think that one of the things, uh, look, I, I think Legion, uh, Legion 13 is going to be a pretty good team, um, uh, but I only have them seventh in my uh, preseason rankings for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is because this is one of the things that I've floated out there about live teams that people are going to have to keep an eye on. You're really only as good as your fourth best player. And I think that um, having a, a rookie, having a um, amateur is their fourth player, Caleb Surratt, even though he's a very good, good player. Uh, he's unproven at the pro level. So um, I've, I've got to knock them them back a few, um, even with uh, sort of having that one-two punch of Rahm and Hatton. I still, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see how everything play, play, plays out, but I've got them right in the middle of the pack right now. Uh, I, I think Kieran Vincent, like, again, he's, he's a good player. Like, he's a, no knock against him. But when you start looking at those top teams, Feel like their third and fourth players are just a little bit better. Than Can I what ask Legion you a question has. on that third and fourth players thing? It hasn't sure. been announced. It hasn't been said. Yeah. Does it make sense that with Hudson Swafford and with um, Laurie Cantor going over as the two floating players, so you have got your fifty-two from your, your thirteen lots of four, and then you have got your two 
floating mm-hmm. singles to make your 54 players, making even groups and tees, right? Right. That you've got the ability, not during the event, but to drop a player and take a singles player, i.e. those two are pool players. So they're there to cover injuries from where teams are short. Let's say, let's say um, K, K, um, Kieran Vincent breaks an ankle, God forbid. You can call up Laurie Cantor, that event, and you've got his points so you don't miss out. He'd be on your team then for a few weeks. What about Kieran Vincent? I'm not picking on Kieran Vincent if you're listening. I'm not picking on you, Kieran. I'm just saying your name. That Kieran hasn't performed for three events in a row, and John goes, I'll have, um, I'll have Hudson Swafford or I'll have Laurie Cantor, and you put one in and out the pool. Could that be a thing? Because that, I think, yes. is a really good way of getting that bit of strength. Yeah, I, I think Liv is definitely planning on on having these windows during the season where you can upgrade your your roster. They haven't really made it public exactly when that's going to be. I think they're going to have either one or two of those windows, whether it be a trading window or like some sort of a transfer window where you can bring in someone else. This is something that the Ironheads really needed to do last year when you had Siwon Kim that was just absolutely stinking up the entire year. Like they they really did need to bring someone else in to uh, to to replace him but they never had that opportunity i think there are going to be windows here in 2024 where you are able to do that uh whether it be one of the floating players that sort of travels or if it's somebody else from the outside that uh is sort of waiting in the wings like we know of players that like uh they they want to come over to live but again we're we're just uh, there's only 52 spots on teams so uh, you're never going to be able to accommodate every player that want, wants to come over. And I think it's something that um, I think we need to sort of keep an eye on as the season goes on, since there are going to be new players that sort of come in, uh, you know, dur- during the course of the season. Speaking of that, are, are there any, for the uninitiated amongst us, are there any open transfer windows at any other points during the season? Like there is in soccer, there's a January window and whatever. Is there, is there any opportunity for a formal you know, not just a we'll pick up a floater sort of thing. Yeah. Is there, is there, is that, how's that work? They're allowed to do it. They are allowed to do it. It never happened because I think the teams are settling in and and it's new. It was the, the nascent okay. nature of what we're seeing with Liv is that yeah. it's so hard to build this, that and the other, but I wouldn't be surprised there are a few transfers and I think... But they can do it any time. Sorry to interrupt. They can just literally yeah. do it any time. It's not so like here's on, a window on, for on like... On the promo reel for last year's events... Mm. When they said, hey, we're launching Liv this year. And this is what's happening. And they said, hey, Liv will be more fun. And there was Louis Oosthuizen cooking a barbecue with stingers written on it. On that, they said they got, they got the ability to trade players from team to team. So the indication is it can be done. Yeah. And I think they are going to formalize a particular time frame when you're able to do that. That hasn't been publicized yet, except it's definitely something that's coming. I'm pretty sure that's going to be on um on tap here for uh, 2024 um again we'll have to see exactly when that announcement come, comes out but um they they wanted to do do it last year obviously with the whole matt wolf situation but uh with with smash but everything worked worked out in the off season window so um uh, we'll we'll have to see how these these teams get on like that's one of the really exciting things to me is like uh yeah in theory these these teams you know they've they've got good chemistry, but um, again, <laughs> maybe there, there's some big blow up between uh, John Rum and Terrell Hatton where they are they're at each other's throats. You know, half, halfway through the season, can we see a such situation where uh, Rum decides, you know what, Terrell, thank you for your service. Um, I need to trade you to some some other team. I need to bring in, you know, um, who whoever, maybe Paul Casey, maybe, maybe something like that. Who knows? But you know, they're they're there might be opportunities for these, you know, trades based off of team chemistry and, and if things are actually working. And that's one of the really cool things uh, that I'm excited about for the season. So all I have to do is just keep practicing then, because I, I don't want to blow off any steam here, boys, but I don't want to rub it in or, you know, make you guys feel bad about yourselves. But sometimes I do drive it 230 yards. So keep that. <laughs> oh, mate, don't, don't even start. Yesterday, yesterday I played nine holes and three over including a bladed wedge for a double bogey. And I never played a wedge. Anyone who's played me knows I don't blade a wedge. That's my best part of my game. I should have been one over for the front nine. I hit seven out of um, nine fair, uh, six out of nine fairways. 
Um, the three I didn't hit because they were par three. Uh, two was a par three, and then one I, I just got on the fringe. So it, I'm, bit, I'm green in regulation or on fairways in regulation. One, three over. Then I lost all ability to physically move or swing my hands or body and managed to get 11 over for the round. Golf is so shit at times, isn't it? Rubbish sport, mate. It will never catch on. There's no money in it. I, There's no uh, bloody talent in it. I, I got to say... You. I gotta say, nothing makes me gloss over more when someone else is talking about their round. Like I just, yeah, I don't I'm not interested. I'm not interested, but, but but it's totally fine. It's we are here to be, you know, a psychiatrist office. Some, what, sometimes. What, that, why do you think that is? Why do you think that is that you, you can be an absolute, absolutely on fire? I couldn't play any. I can't play any better for nine holes, and then. I literally walk from the ninth green to the tenth tee and lose all physical ability. What is that like? It. It happens so many times when people have a really great front nine and they're like, oh my God, like I just added a scorecard. Like I'm like under par for the first time ever. Like, what do I do? And that alone is going to change your whole mentality for the rest, rest of the round. Like that is like you, you start putting so much pressure on yourself to be perfect. Uh, when you weren't doing that on the first tee, you, you were like, well, you know, I don't really know what to expect today. Uh, your expectations are low. And then all of a sudden you, you, you find yourself outperforming expectations and it's almost like you have this mental guardrail, this mental governor where like, um, it's not going to allow you to continue to have a round like, like that. We see that throughout professional golf too. It's, it's like when you see a player that shoots 28 on the front nine, you know, they're not going to shoot 28 on the back nine either. Like they're, they're going to be lucky to come in you know, even par and maybe slight, uh, not slightly better. They're still going to shoot a very low round, but they're not going to uh, shoot 58, 57 unless you're uh, Bryson. Um, so there are these little mental things that you just have to get past. Like it's something every player struggles with, uh, no matter what your level is. I've talked to so many professional golfers about this, this now. Um, it's a real thing. It's something everybody deals with. Um, and that's why, when I see these players that are able to, um, they're able to um, elevate their performance mentally when it really matters. That mental fortitude is something that is like so like mind blowing to me. It's something that makes me raise them in my own mind. Uh, where you have these players that are able to elevate them themselves when they need to do it most. Like that's something that's a skill. And it's a skill that not very many golfers, have, not that many people have. It. No. So that's one of the things you just have, have to keep in mind. Like, just keep your expectations low. Don't let your sort of mental game get to you. Just like, it sounds so boring, but you have to take it one shot at a time. And that's it, the only it philosophy. It's different, though, to other sports. Because, like, when I played cricket, I tarp on about playing cricket at a good level, and I did. But I, ne I actually used my anger and my angst and my self-expectation to make me better. And I really fed off of that. So I think that it's very hard for me to unlearn that. I was very much a, a the harder, my, harder I was on myself and the harder anyone was on me, the better I performed. So I think that's quite, that's actually obviously what you're saying and what I'm experiencing is that is the complete opposite in golf for me. It's, and I've got to learn how to deal with that because it is so different. And there's such a, I think there's such a level of fine motor ability that's required to hit the shot that you need to hit when you need to hit it. You know, this is a game of degrees, you know, in, 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 instead of a, a nice, a nice soft cut landing on a green and you knowing exactly where you are, you know, yeah. you're a degree from a pull, which is 20 yards left. And it, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just the fine motor skills required to do that. And I, to the point on the mental side, Jay, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And I think it's the same from a physical standpoint, the nervous system and the, the training that these professionals have built up. When you put those two together, you realize that any, any, any golfer on any tour is, is like a world apart from scratch, you know, and it's, it's wonderful to see it. And I think, you know, when you're talking to the non-converted, those that don't necessarily follow golf or, you know, see it as, as a difficult sport, you're like, that's sort of frustrating. I wish I could just help you to see these things. <laughs> but yeah, it's a tough yeah. one. It's a tough one. It's the most frustrating sport ever, isn't it? Yeah, it's part of the reason why there's uh, you look at all of these like professional high level athletes, they get in the golf and they become fanatics at it because they've 
been able to elevate them themselves on these other um in these other sports um and golf they're just not able to do it so it's this like constant challenge where they're trying to beat down that that wall and they're they're not able to because it's a completely different challenge than what they they faced in their uh, other sports absolutely is now we are going to stick a pin in it right now ben and i have got dad duties to attend to and or we run along and continue for another half an hour and deal with the divorces that will follow let's flip the coin on that one next week we are going to stick a pin in though because we are sane for now so jay it's been a pleasure mate good to see you as always appreciate your insight and uh excited to see what you've got on twitter this week so i think it might be a bit of a an interesting week <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a good week. I'm um, going to be posting up my preseason live golf rankings here in a bit. Um, I've already gotten written up over the weekend, so I'm going to post it soon. Everybody look, look out for that. It'll be on my Twitter profile. Um, and yeah, trying to engage with the haters less, like I said, because uh, when you're winning the game, um, as uh, live golf continues to win this sort of game against the, the establishment, there's not really much you have to say. Well, we will see how many haters come out of the woodwork and whether it's the same person with 50 different Twitter accounts. TBC, everyone. Tune in next week to find out more. Ben, always a pleasure, mate. Good to see you. I like your new hoodie. Yeah. Sent it. It's really lovely. Um, I like it. And you want to know more, just hit me up and I'll let you know where the firm it comes from. Uh, so it's your complexion, UK. my friend. Well, yeah, it also kind of goes a bit of the company branding as well. But yeah, I, <laughs> That's I like it. Um, I was going to say, yeah, look, thank you, for the, every, thank you for the therapy session on how I managed to throw away an absolute storming round. Um, and we will hopefully in the next week and a half start to get some detail, maybe two and a half weeks, get the, some details out of our first meetup, which is probably looking like a 24-person a um, golf day, so small golf day um, with a couple of speakers coming along. So got a few people. It, what was the mark we're sending out first to those what the what, what's that brand what's that band level in our supporters called again um it's the golf lover so we'll um in fact i think yeah. everyone on every tier actually gets it go and check it out glugc.com slash support and get involved on that one but I there, actually will, think there, the, will only, there will only be invites. 22 places because you and i are going to yeah. place there'll only be 22 places so we will open up to everyone but those who are one of our different levels of supporting tier they will get the information first yeah, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's on every tier actually, but um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fantastic, and to you, the ever present listener, to you, the ever present golf lover, to you, the ever present Twitter hater. We respect you and love you all equally. Because what else would we do? We this is what we love. So please let us know what you think of the episode. Hit us up at GLU Golf Club on the old Twitter. Let us know in the comments over on YouTube and tell your friends that they can listen in their podcast app of choice. I've been Mark, I've been Ben, and I've been with Jay as well. Until next time, look after yourself and try not to blow up your round this weekend. See you soon. Bye-bye.